people remember, they're going to remember where they were treated well. And you're spending a lot of money. There's nothing worse than you leave the dealership and like something breaks down. This is not something we have had happen in years since we bought her. These salesmen, a lot of them, you can tell they have no clue what they're talking right. about. Hey everyone, Izzy and MJ from Endless RVing and we have a really, I guess, informative and important video. We've put many videos out about the softening of RV sales. Mm -hmm. You have uh, sales numbers declining, the cost of used RVs are declining. It seems to be happening every month. We have a lot of inflation and there's definitely a hit that the RV industry is taking. However, with everything that's bad, there's always something that's good. And in this video, we're gonna focus on the huge potential the RV industry has to bounce back maybe even stronger. So the first place the RV industry can really improve and build for the future is going to be right at the dealership level. Now, a lot of different dealerships out there that have survived over the years, those family dealers, they mm -hmm. focus on customer service. The smaller ones. Yeah, and a lot of them have continued to focus on customer service even through the crazy pandemic where everybody mm -hmm. was just buying RVs, right? Like you could hire a chimpanzee and a chimp could sell RVs because it didn't matter. People, people that's what they wanted. They were buying them over the phone, sight unseen, across the country. Yeah. It just didn't matter. So focusing on customer service, and what do we mean by that? Well, we mean by training your salespeople. Now, how many times have we been to dealerships and RV shows? RV shows are a little bit of an exception because they hire people to work those shows. But you go to these shows, these salesmen, a lot of them, you can tell, number one, they don't live the RV lifestyle. Number two, they have no clue what they're talking right. about. There they have no training. There are some really good salesmen out there, but yes, there are a good number that we knew more than. <laughs> Yeah, and that's not saying anything about us, it's just saying how no. little that they know. Right, right. And if you're if you are passionate about your craft and you want to be successful at it, you will live and breathe that craft. And we truly believe that. I mean, Jim is a perfect example, RV concierge. RV, yeah. That guy knows RVs. He's mm -hmm. had many RVs. He lives the RV lifestyle. And Matt from Matt's Matt RV now Reviews. Is out, you know, RVing. He, yeah, and, yeah, I mean, they know their RVs, but again, focusing on training salespeople to not only know their RVs, but know when you meet a customer, there should be kind of an interview process so you're able to best provide them with the RV that fits them best, right? There's nothing worse than you going, you're going to spend, you know, 50, 60, sometimes 500, $600,000 and you get an RV and it just doesn't fit your lifestyle because whatever, the, the salesman's like, I'm going to sell you one that's really expensive right. and uh, I don't care. There was, that's no, there not was cool. no guidance, no consult about what really fits your lifestyle as a consumer. One company that focuses definitely on customer service is going to be Liquid Spring. They're the official sponsor of this video. We we have the Liquid Spring four corner suspension upgrade on our motorhome and it's been outstanding. If you don't know what Liquid Spring is, it is one of the best suspension upgrades you can put on your RV. They are available from the manufacturers as an option with the following companies. Tiffin Open Road, Rev Groove, the Holiday Rambler, and Fleetwood on most of their gas models, including the Bander, Southwind, Invicta, and Admiral. Also on Nexus, they are available on the Triumph, Rebel, and Wraith also on Phoenix Cruiser. Every couple of months they're adding new manufacturers. The best way to find out about Liquid Spring is contact Wayne Wells from Liquid Spring. His information will be below, or you can go and drive one of their demo units for free. The closest one that we are gonna be at is going to be at the Hershey RV Show. They will be doing demo rides all the time, and then you can sit in the driver's seat and make a decision for yourself. I think after once you drive it, you can definitely buy one. We have been super happy with ours. It's been over a year, and it's definitely the best upgrade we've ever done to Nelly. So the second area, right at the dealership level will be focusing on the PDI. Now you pay for a PDI when you go to dealerships and there's many smaller dealerships that this is a big deal for them. They have a whole process that they go through and they wanna make sure that that detail, that that RV not only looks good, that it's fully functional when you get it. Cause like we said, you're spending a lot of money. There's nothing worse than you leave the dealership and like something breaks down. Right. That, and it breaks down because that part was never checked or replaced or fixed. Mm -hmm. That's really important. That's a, a easy way to put a sour taste in somebody's mouth. And in a really tough economy, that's a, an easy way to lose potential customers. Right. We have RV inspector friends that have seen rigs that have come out after a PDI and it was, you know, passed with flying colors. Mm -hmm. And there is a lot still wrong Obvious with things. that unit. Yes, that were just obviously overlooked. Again, not blaming a lot of the dealership. They don't have the time. They don't have the resources to do this properly. But now maybe they will be. Also, what I would love to see is there are a lot of dealerships out there that are flat out rejecting certified inspectors from coming in to do inspections on 
units that people have bought and want to have a qualified inspection done. They're just saying no. And I would really love to see that change. Yeah, if you're a customer and you're going to buy a RV, whatever class it is, that it should be automatic that you get an inspection. A big red flag, if a dealership is giving your, your inspector or you a hard time about it, that's a big red flag. They should be encouraging it because if they're selling a good product, it's an open book. We, here's right. the product. We will fix whatever your inspector finds, of course, within reason. It should be simple. They should be offering that. They should, they should have a card from the inspectors right there for you. So the third area, and, and this is an opportunity for dealerships to make a lot of money. Having qualified techs there, this is like a simple thing. Treating people kindly and nicely. We actually have seen that down in the South where yeah. it's very different than up North. But yeah, treating people the way they want to be treated and having things move smoothly so people's RVs aren't sitting in service for, you know, two months at a time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this, it's a real simple thing. If you say you're going to do something in an amount of time, like if I'm going to drop my motor home off on July 5th and it's supposed to go in on July 5th, it shouldn't be going in on July like 30th. It should be done in a timely fashion. And if there is a delay, there should be some kind of communication well, and a yeah. reason for it. I was just going to say that communication is huge and busy. I'm a business owner. And if people know that something's happening, if something's going wrong and they at least know about it, I think they're more apt to be a little bit more okay with, with the situation. Mm -hmm. But if they find, you know, waiting way past the deadline and then finding out that things were wrong, that's not a good way to do business. And we know this works because there's two places we will only take our RV to. Number one, Country Classic RV in Wantage, New Jersey. We've known them now for what, two or yeah, three years? Two years, yeah. Uh, when we first went, you know, they were an auto body place and they kind of converted over to RV because they, they saw an opportunity. And we first went there, I mean, we were calling them, yeah, bring it in right, now. Right in. They're six to eight weeks out, but Again, if they tell you they're gonna have it at a certain time, they will have it and their quality is impeccable. Yes. This is why now they have 100 right. RVs on their lot waiting. The second one will be uh, Gerber. Gerber RV in Hackensack. They've been around for a long time. Very busy, they're, they're kind of expensive, but they do quality work. The job is gonna get done. They keep you up to date. If there's mm -hmm. something, they will tell you. And they've been in business since the 70s. So this does work. And again, it's a huge opportunity for dealerships to make money when sales mm -hmm. might be a little bit softer. If you're enjoying the video so far, we invite you to hit the subscribe button Button below hit the notification bell so you know when we go live or release new videos also we have a private facebook group we want you to join us it's called endless rving rvers coming together and last but not least link below will be for our free monthly newsletter sign up and come along last thing on the dealership level is going to be pricing now obviously a dealership cannot control msrp mm -hmm. that is set by the manufacturer however what we saw during the pandemic was dealerships taking advantage of people now we don't not look, all we, we always yes say not all we don't look down upon anyone making money everybody a business mm -hmm. you have to make money mm -hmm. but when you are switching prices during a show and increasing them $20,000 overnight, that is not cool. People remember. People they, remember. They really do. And when it's time to buy their next RV, maybe right. they didn't buy this one, but they're going to buy another one or whatever. They're going to remember where they were treated well. Yes. And sometimes people are willing to pay more because they were treated well. So yeah, we know uh, several RV salesmen. If you're paying 25% off, which is kind of standard, the dealership is still making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be paying MSRP. I mean, people pay it. But with that being said, there were dealerships that were still giving yes. quality discounts yep. during the pandemic. They're still making their money, but mm -hmm. they're just not hammering people and really taking advantage. So that is a place where, again, opportunity for dealerships to build a reputation as fair and quality, and, and you will have customers coming for a long time. Because you know what? Most RVers, they don't stop at one RV. Mm -hmm. They get multiple. And if their kids into the lifestyle, you have generations. So you have to think long term as, you know, RV dealerships. So now let's talk on the manufacturing level. Here's an opportunity. Number one, they can reach out to populations that are not really represented in RVing, right? There is a, a, a large population out there that is for the pickings, right? focusing, trying to get new people into RVing. Definitely a place to go. The second place would be to focus on what RVers want. Now, Alliance has become very successful based on customer feedback. Another one that's really good is Phoenix. Phoenix Cruiser, they take, so for example, we had a, did a couple videos with Phoenix Cruiser where we showcased their RVs and they were in those comments on our videos, answering everything, telling people what to expect, what they were working on. They're listening and a, and a lot of manufacturers are doing that, which is good. Using better materials, maybe right mm -hmm. and taking the opportunity now that production has slowed down I know a couple of big manufacturers are slowing down production focusing 
on QC. Quality control, yes. right? Yes. Pride back into building the RVs. I know there, there's been a lot of problems. We have a, a lot of subscribers that have had problems, major problems with brand new RVs. Mm -hmm. There should not be in any situation an RV, a $300,000 motorhome leaving the factory without sealant on the skylights. Or screws not screwed in. It just shouldn't Literally happen. slides that are not adhered properly. I mean, things, I, yeah, I'm just seeing pictures and stuff, they're really disturbing. And that happens, it tends to happen with the big manufacturers that are pushing out a lot of RVs. It hasn't really affected those smaller, you know, custom RV manufacturers because it didn't really matter to them. It's just their waiting list just got longer. But for a lot of manufacturers, this can be a place to win back your name. There's certain mm -hmm. names out there that people are just not going to buy because of the names. So in terms of just adding on to the customer service, we're finding that there are dealers now that are starting to find time to do this. We got a call the other day. Cold call. Cold call. It was a voicemail, right? Yeah. From where we purchased our RV. And it was basically the salesman saying, we know you purchased your RV in this year. I'm just reaching out to see how everything's going. Are you looking at any time to trade in? Just kind of getting a feeler out there to see. And these, this is not something we have had happen in a year since we bought her, actually. Definitely good for the customer. Obviously, yeah. their sales are slow because they're they're reaching out for customers, but that is good for the customer. It is good. If they good. do their homework and they take their time, there is opportunity to get a good deal on an RV. So in the comments below, let us know what are some of your thoughts, what are some of your opinions on how the RV industry, both on the dealership level and the manufacturing level, can take advantage and improve their sales in this poor economy. Put it in the comments below. And for myself and MJ, it's a journey of a lifetime and we'll see, see you, you on, on the, the road. road.